All right, for this video, we are gonna be solving trig functions with multiple angles. So if you notice here, we have a 4x right over here on our second problem, we have an x over two, and we're gonna to try to solve these two problems out. We're gonna solve these the same way that we would have solved any other trig function. Notice that even though we have an x over two on this problem, both, both trig functions have an x over two. So we're not gonna to have to use a half angle formula Right here, there's only one trig function, so we don't have to use the double angle formula. And so we're gonna solve it just a, a little bit differently. And so what I want us to think about is I wanna think about the four X as just an angle. And so instead of writing four X, I'm gonna substitute that that four X and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just simply say theta equals four X. So if theta equals four X, instead of writing four X, I'm gonna just solve for theta. And then at the end, we're gonna sub back in the four X for theta. So I get two cosine theta minus one equals zero. And solving for theta, first we know that we have to solve for cosine theta, and so we need to isolate the, the trig function, and the way we do that, uh, move the one, divide by two, so cosine theta is gonna equal one half. And so, Every other time that we've solved a trig function, we know that cosine is our, is our x value on our unit circle. And so to find cosine theta, to find the angle, the angle right here where we get one half, it's gonna be on the right side of our trig, or our, on our unit circle. And it's gonna be uh, right here and right there, and that's gonna be pi over three and five pi over three. So that is what we're looking for. So the last video we watched, or that we went over, we looked for our infinite solution. So let's look at this problem also using infinite solutions. So I'm gonna say theta equals pi over three plus two n pi. And then I'm also gonna say theta equals five pi over three plus two n pi. But as we stated at the beginning, we're looking for x, we're not looking at what theta is, so I need to sub back the 4x for theta. So let's get rid of theta, and let's substitute back 4x, because theta simply meant 4x. So to get x by itself, what we need to do is simply divide by 4x, or by four. So x is gonna be pi over 12, because pi over three divided by four gives us pi over 12, and then divide two n pi by four, and so the twos cancel out and we get n pi over two. So that is one of our solutions. And then x is gonna equal five pi over 12 by dividing by four, which is the same as multiplying by one fourth, and that's gonna be plus n pi over two. So the only difference on solving a multiple angle is at the very end, once we, once we isolate the cosine and get rid of cosine, we need to divide out four or whatever is inside of the angle, we just need to do the regular operations to get rid of it. Now the next one, I see that we have an x over two and the x over two matches, so we can go ahead and solve this without using any other uh, formulas or, or tricks. And I'm gonna again say that theta equals x over two. That way we can have it look a little bit simpler. So sine theta is gonna equal one plus two cosecant theta. I notice that we have a sine and then we have a cosecant. So let's go ahead and change that cosecant to, to two over sine. So I get sine theta equals one plus two over sine theta. And then at this point, since we have a sine on the denominator, I don't really want it on the denominator, so I'm gonna multiply everything on this problem by sine because if I multiply everything by sine, then that sine will cancel out on the, the denominator and then it'll, we won't have any, any more fractions. 
So if I multiply everything by sine, so multiply everything by sine theta, then on the left side, we're gonna get sine squared theta. We're gonna, that's gonna equal sine theta, and that's gonna equal two. This sine is gonna multiply to everything. You can't leave anything out. And so at this point, it looks like a simple um, factoring problem. So let's go ahead and factor. So in order to factor it, we need everything to one side. So I'm gonna get sine squared theta, and that's gonna be minus sine theta, minus two, and that's gonna equal zero. So at this point, we're looking for the factors of two with a difference of one, and so that's gonna be two and one, and so I get sine theta, and then that's gonna be minus two, sine theta plus one, and that's gonna equal zero. From here, we're gonna set both factors equal to zero. So of course, sine theta equals two, and sine theta equals negative one. When we get sine theta equals two, we can remember back that two is greater than the highest point that could possibly be on our, um, on our graph. So one is the highest that you could have. So two is outside of our range, so this would be undefined. Let's just put undefined for this one. And then when sine theta equals negative one, that's gonna be every time that we equal negative one, it's at three pi over two, so negative one, and then every two pi after that. So we're gonna say theta equals three pi over two plus two n pi. And again, we don't care what theta is, we wanna care what x is, so subbing for, for theta, we get x over two, that equals three pi over two plus two n pi. And then at this point, to get x by itself, we're gonna multiply everything by two. And so x is gonna equal three pi, because the twos cancel out when I multiply it over, plus four n pi. And so that is the only answer we get, because this side is undefined because it's outside of our range. And again, solving multiple angles, you need to simply substitute the x over two for a theta as long as they match. If they do not match, then you need to use one of your other formulas, like the double angle or the half angle formulas, and then solve it. And the only change